be live, and then uh, we'll post it up later, and we'll we'll just add a, a picture for you, um, and put it in the frame. And sure. uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I think you have a sense of it. I'll I'll sort of set the conversation up, and then uh, we'll just take it from there. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. It's uh, what, what time is it over there? Uh, Nine thirty at night. Okay, great. So not too. Late. Are you in London? No, but near it. Okay, cool. I almost I almost was in London a couple of years ago, but I didn't know I was gonna go to LSE, but ended up deciding not to go. Hmm. Um, all right, are we all set? We set, Kelly. Yep. All right, so we'll be live in about a couple of we live whenever. All right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Welcome to a Majority X debate between Michael Brooks and Sargon. You're not, wait, Sargon of Akkad. Because forgive me, I actually confuse you with Sargon of Iberius. But this is Sargon of Akkad. Uh, and we are going to be debating the progressive left meme terrorism, Islam, the Middle East, and uh, figuring it all out together. I know people are watching on the live stream. We'll obviously post this again uh, later after it's all over. And uh, before I go further, I want to welcome uh, Mr. Sargon himself. Sargon, how are you? Hi there. Very well. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, glad, uh, glad to get, have an opportunity to have this, uh, this confrontation with you, this friendly mm -hmm. confrontation. Um, so, um, I guess we'll, we'll sort of start this uh, conversation off. This is how it went because I, I do a segment, uh, for majority X, which is the majority reports YouTube channel called debunked where I take ideas like Barack Obama's a secret black Panther, uh, or, uh, something equally as ludicrous as that. And I'll mm -hmm. do a debunk, um, and I went after this meme that I see a lot on social media uh, of this quote-unquote regressive left. Um, and you had a response uh, to that, uh, to my video, uh, where you attempted to take it down. But let me first frame uh, the argument so everyone remembers what I basically am arguing in that video and beyond. There's sort of three core areas here to this debate. Number one is that a lot of people who... And, and, and look, first, before we go any further, I want to concede right out of the gate that if we're doing sort of hunting on social media for people writing stupid things, we can find examples of anything. So I'm sure that there are some people who have justified, you know, even terrorism in some instances. There's people who have justified human rights abuses because of a kind of a delusional cultural relativism. Right, uh, okay. I did a, so we, we yeah, agreed so, from the gate so we there is so, such a thing as the regressive left. Uh, well, not you in the just, way... You just said it existed. Hold, 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 the conclusion of your video was <laughs> the, the regressive left doesn't exist. So I'm going to explain that. <laughs> so, it res, so it exists as, in the same way Bernie bros exist, in the sense that, yes, you can find maybe one or two examples of people writing dumb things, but as a large, organized, politically effective force, no, it does not. And I'm going to explain the three... Okay. Wait, hold up, hold up. I'm going to okay. explain the three variables, and then you can go ahead. Okay, go. Okay. So number one, it doesn't exist for... Th that the sort of prime people driving it are people who seem to be like yourself, unfortunately, that are people who want to claim the term liberal, but also engage in lazy, ahistorical generalizations about Islam. So that's why this term floats around a lot. Number two, it seems to appeal to people who do not want to do the actual homework and take on the intellectual challenge of, as an example, studying history, studying policy, understanding why we are where we are with an issue like Islamic uh, terrorism or Islamic extremism. These are people who don't want to engage in a conversation on, as an example, who funded Wahhabism and the role of Saudi foreign policy in developing that, and the role of Western policy in developing Saudi foreign policy. These are much more complicated discussions than just internet memes. And people who use the term regressive left almost always want to avoid them. Number three, the reason it's a problem to talk in a reductionist and dumb way about Islam is not because it's 
PC or it hurts people's feelings or all this other mishigas, that's Hebrew, uh, excuse me, Yiddish, by the way. The reason is, is because we need to be very smart and very precise and very strategic in understanding these issues, precisely because terrorism is an important issue, as is multiculturalism, as is the quest for human rights and reform within not just Islamic countries, but in fact, globally. So when we make dumb, generic overgeneralizations about Islam, we undermine the work of people like Fatima Mernisi, as an example. I don't know if you're familiar with her. She was a prominent Moroccan Islamic feminist. Asma Jahangir, who's a Pakistani human rights attorney who's worked in Pakistan for several uh, decades. Uh, Khatami, uh, Ahmed Musali, who were both Islam and democracy theorists, working on theories of reconciling Islam with democracy. Now, these projects may or may not be successful, but if you're saying that you are compassionate and concerned about the human rights dimensions of what is happening inside Islamic societies, and then you turn around and you say that Islam is one monolithic thing or the mother load of bad ideas, which you co-signed on in your video attempting oh, to take me down, did. then, okay, so you absolutely did. Okay, so great. When you co-sign on that, and then you say you want to support reformists within the Muslim world, you're engaging in a performative contradiction, and again, avoiding doing the actual legwork of the real historical, real policy investigation that is required to forward what you claim you want. So the conclusion is, is that it's a thing that exists in tiny pockets. It's vastly inflated in terms of its importance. People who inflated in, in terms of its importance don't want to do policy or history or geography or economics. And as a result of not wanting to do policy, history, geography, or economics, it leads to dumb ideas, bad policy, simplistic and delusional understandings about very important things. Look, I don't play video games, uh, so I don't make YouTube videos about them. It's important to have a grasp in the ground of what you're talking about. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Go um, ahead. Well, I'm I'm convinced I'm talking to someone from the regressive left now. If that's any help to you, in uh, identifying it's exactly profound what's going help. On here. It's a pro well, I, you, you do seem to be profound. under a few misapprehensions. You but okay? So, okay, but go oh, into on, actual on, detail. No, no, go into actual on, detail. No, 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 no. You've just had like a five-minute monologue. So go into actual detail, though. Don't do silly ad hominem. Oh, go I, into will, actual I will go into detail. Right? Okay, go ahead. So, how big is big enough for you to regard someone as important? That's the first question that comes up, because you think that the regressive left is made up of unimportant plebeians on the internet making ahistorical generalizations. And not just, the, the no. thing you have to understand as well is the regressive left is not limited to opinions on Islam, but that is one of the major issues that people are trying to talk about that the regressive left is getting in the way of. But how, how big would these people need to be? What, what makes kind of me a member of the regressive left? No, no, no. No, answer you just question. threw it out, no, answer, so I want to know why. My question. No, no, they, no. You answer mine first because you put a direct no, accusation my, at me. No, I asked my question. You first. put a direct accusation. I don't care. At me. I asked my question. I first. care. How big I would, care. Well, I don't care that you care. How well, I don't big care would that you don't enough? care that I care. What makes That's me a right. part of the regressive left? Go ahead. Justify Literally it. Literally your opening monologue. Right. So and explain you that. you said you don't understand why. So let's actually Go get, ahead. get into that, shall well, we? Yeah. Tell now, me why I'm, I'm in the regressive left. Go you, for it. You have made the assertion yes. that the people in the regressive left who you agree are the regressive left mm -hmm. are not big enough to be important. Mm -hmm. How big is big enough to be important to you? What makes me part of the regressive left was the question. No. The question is how big do you think these people have to be? I mean, do they have to be in charge of... A major um, news outlet. Um, I think that you can, th this is a semantic game. I think if you want to say, okay, so as an example, you guys wheel out Glenn Greenwald as an example mm -hmm. of the quote unquote regressive left, of uh, which I don't, which is exactly, look, and I actually don't agree with everything that Glenn says about foreign policy, but mainly, to. sorry? I wouldn't expect you to. But mainly, the reason seems to be and again, explain what makes him regressive left. If you don't want to explain what makes me regressive left, you're going to have to answer that question. It seems to me that the main objection to him, again, is that Glenn Greenwald engages in policy analysis and history analysis, which you guys always go to as, that's a justification, 
That's an avoidance of the issue, even though those, of course, are the main drivers. But what makes Glenn Greenwald of the regressive left and or what makes me of the regressive left? You still right. haven't explained okay. it. We, we, we agree that Glenn Greenwald is, ag- is agreed to be a part of the regressive left. Well, I, mean, I don't even agree to the, to the term. I still, you still okay. haven't explained to me why me or him I, are part I, I of will. it. I will. I will get to that. But we have to establish what we're talking about first. We so have. So go for it. So, okay, so Glenn Greenwald, right? Ezra Klein, would you say that he's... Someone with a wide reach, with a loud voice on the internet? Uh, yes, sure. So would I. He's also a part of the regressive Okay, life. so great. I'm excited okay. now. Explain well, what yeah, connects good. the three I'm of us to, other than being Jewish. Calm down, slow down, right? We're not in any hurry, right? So We, I mean, actually, do have a, say, we do actually have a hard out. We, we okay, have other things to do. That, so go okay, ahead. That's fine. But you have to understand, we have to go through this. So the less you interrupt me, the easier this will be. And right? the easier it will be if but you answer the York, questions. The New York Times, okay. they would also be a, a major outlet. You'd agree? That and salon.com. I've never, heard, never heard of. I've never heard of the New York Times. You've never heard of the New Bear York Times. Bear with me. I've okay. never heard of them. But what, what about salon.com? Have you heard of them? Um, is that a bar? No, it's a newspaper. Well, a newspaper. I say, I say generously. It's a, it's a <laughs> regressive outlet. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So the main issue is that you're trying to discuss events and people, and we need to discuss ideas. <laughs> Okay. Do you understand the difference between those two things? Um, before I answer yet another one of your questions, and if, uh, you're going to explain what makes Ezra Klein, Glenn Greenwald, and myself aggressive. Because insofar, all I can tell, the qualities that we share, is that we are interested in policy, history, and the apparatus of how things are actually done, not yeah, in not, masturbation not on the internet. Criticizing your analysis of these things. I, in fact... I'm, I'm going to just assume that I agree with what your analysis is. And we're Jewish. Right. Is that a care. factor? No. Why would you think that would be a factor? This is, this because is I a, thought it would trigger you. I'm just playing with you. Go ahead. You. Go ahead. Relax. You, okay. It's all right. I'm just joking. Look, you have to understand. I, I probably agree with you on your analysis of U.S. foreign policy. I am in no way a fan of U.S. foreign policy. However, I am also not a fan of the policy of the regressive left. It's interesting. That what is that policy? Racial issues Go ahead. before Go ahead. anything else, because this What's is something. What's the policy? Well, bringing up racial issues. In That's fact, it's not a make, policy. That was a joke. This is exactly the policy of the regressive left, right? I've got. Um, <laughs> okay. Seriously, you, right? Okay, I'm looking at an article from Salon.com. Uh, white people are more racist than they realize. On on what possible level do you think it's okay to generalize all white people, or anyone based on their skin color? I mean, that is literally what you're arguing against when it comes to Islam. And this is always a feature of the regressive left. Okay, so I'm going to engage in apparently this, this bar or pub you were referencing published a thing about racism. So I haven't read it. I'm not familiar with the article, but I will go based off of the headline. If you agree... And I just want it to be noted that it is very interesting that you have not engaged at all and are basically conceding the policy terrain, which is the whole point of my video and what you said was bullshit. But I'll go in, I'll go in, no, I'll go into the salon thing. I'll go into the salon thing. I'll go into the salon thing. I'm testing your policy analysis. I'll go into the salon thing. The whole point is a policy analysis, but I'll go into the salon thing. What I presume, what I presume is, well, do you want me to answer or go ahead? Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so what I presume is that the Salon article from this pub, which I have not read, and it's interesting that pubs are publishing articles, that probably what they had done is looked at some research on unconscious racial attitudes and biases. So as an example, you can take a study, and I actually participated in one in college to help somebody for their their thesis, where you can... um, rate when you see names on a screen you can rate public uh, positive or negative reactions to them now you're not told whether or not these are quote unquote black names or white names or asian names or whatever but you can see certain names like well in apropos of this conversation say mohammed and if you rate it negatively maybe that is a cue um for biases that you might have that you're not consciously aware of. So I would assume that the article is just saying that a fair amount of white people hold some biases that they're not necessarily aware of, of which okay. that's okay, undisputably let's, let's true that and not terribly, terrifyingly controversial. Great. Okay, let's take that point. So now if we have uh, data that's very similar that mm-hmm. shows us that, for example, the large number of Muslims hold a conscious mm-hmm. bias. In mm-hmm. fact, this is 
actually their opinion and attitude mm -hmm. on a certain subject, mm -hmm. and that subject is remarkably illiberal, mm -hmm. what should we do? Well, here's what we should do. First of all, what you need to do when you talk about Muslims, obviously, is, first of all, disaggregate that polling data. And any good polling data on quote-unquote white people is going to do that as well. So we right, know I'm, as it, no, 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 let me finish. You want, like, I'll finish. I'll finish. No, no, but that, that's, I'll finish. No, I'm answering your question just because you don't like the direction I'm going in doesn't mean I'm not going to answer it. That wasn't your first response about the thing about white people. You went on to justify it because it was about white people. As soon I as justified, it, I said that was probably what the article was put in a caveat at the beginning. That was probably what the article was. Well, I didn't say how I would write the article. I've never read the article. So I'm not going to get into these mental gymnastics with you. I this can only not, speak. No, because I'm going to speak to... No, I'm, because you still have not defined how I'm a progressive leftist. You haven't yeah. answered any of my questions, and you're not responding to anything I'm saying. I'm, you're talking I'm, about an article that I haven't even read. So but, I'll answer your question if you stop well, interrupting. If not, you can go ahead. Look, right. Do you want to answer or no? Uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. You answer. Okay. So what I would say is you need to, first of all, disaggregate between a religion that includes over a billion people. That's pretty obvious. Attitudes sure. are not the same. They vary widely. Absolutely. The second point is, is that primarily, if you look at this historically and not as some static ahistorical idea and you do the actual legwork and the homework that I know someone like you could do because obviously you're a smart guy and I'm not saying that in any way facetiously. I mean this sincerely. This is partially what frustrates me. You can do the homework and look at and say, okay, so why is it that in different times in history, as a, like in Spain, as an example, Islam was much more forward than Christianity at that time? Why okay, was it? No, no, let me, I'm going to finish the point. History. I'm going to finish the point. Yeah. But why was it? Why was it? Why was it? Why was it that the rise of modern yeah. Wahhabism, which is the core point of the problems you're identifying rightly, is a modern product of Saudi and Western foreign policy. As soon as you engage in that conversation, you're talking about policy, you're talking about history, and those where the real issues are. So if you think just quoting some polling data and telling people that their ideas are stupid is gonna either help liberals in those societies or solve hard policy questions, it might make you feel better at night, and it might make you feel pleased with yourself, but it's delusional, it's not gonna do anything. It's not going anywhere, you and I've never advocated that attitude ideas. for white people or anybody else. Are you uncomfortable talking about these ideas? Because, like with um, nope. uh, Ben Affleck and Sam Harris on the Bill Maher show, as soon as Sam was trying to explain that, look, we know who these people are mm -hmm. that hold these ideas. We know exactly how many people hold these ideas. And we know exactly what they're doing. And we know exactly what their and ideas are. we need to are. know exactly so why, what they're doing. Why can we not talk about these ideas? Um, how many people hold these ideas? Well, it depends which idea you're talking about. Well, but pick, take you your pick. That, take your pick. Okay, well, Sharia law, for example. I mean, okay. sure, I, I presume you're not in favor of Sharia law, right? Well, I am not in favor of any type of religious uh, okay. law. Okay, but, but, but you still, but, but just, just to note here, we're still going off and the wheels are coming off. You have not defined in any serious way regressive left or explained what connects me, Ezra, and Glenn. Okay. Other than I, I that, we want to talk about policy. You still haven't done it. First. I'll and get to Sharia later, but I've already asked no, four you, of your questions yes, without I, you I, answering I, that I, one. It's the fact that you seem to have racial and ethnic hang-ups and sort of cultural hang-ups. I think you do. I'm not well, hearing any from me. I'm sure, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do think that, right? But, okay, well, that's just so what you're fixated on. Sharia law now, right? Okay, I've explained why I think you're part of the regressive left. Because so I... No, you haven't. No, you haven't. You're asserting you have. The... One of the reasons what hang -ups? I call you the regressive What hangups? Tell me what hangups. You will not allow the conversation to go any further forward. Because I won't and let it go in your right direction, now. which is the point of my video. You're doing that right now. <laughs> okay. No, you really are. Right? Define okay, it. Define it. Sure. All I'm asking, really define what are my I, hangups? I actually just do. Just do it. You You're... seem to have a problem talking about people of different ethnicity. I will talk about any ethnicity you want, I mean, if you cool. ever answer my qu any questions. In, in this Go. specific case, let's talk about Sharia law. No, let's after you answer the question, I'll talk to you for the rest of the conversation about Sharia. If you can answer the three questions that you've avoided the whole conversation. What this are my hang-ups? Define regressive left and what makes left. me Glenn and Ezra. Yeah, you can keep repeating it all you want, but you haven't answered the question. This is a liberal what debate. What you want to do now is indicative of your position on the regressive Not left. Not agreeing with you? you okay. No. Attempting di to diffuse and define your terms. Then we'll talk about Sharia the rest of the time. 
<laughs> answer Honestly, the questions, then we'll go. I have answered your question. No, you haven't. You've there said is no you answer have. good enough for you. All right, I've answered but your questions on Sharia. Like, well, I've answered your questions on Sharia. I have. Okay, well, let, well, I haven't asked any questions about Sharia yet. Well, let's just say I have. Is, do you agree with it? And you kind of went blah, 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 about that. So do Because you I've already Sharia? answered four questions when yeah, you've answered it's none. It's <laughs> for you to understand, right? Do you agree with Sharia law? Do you I'll think go into good... Sharia if you answer those questions. But look, for sake think... of moving things along, because you're never going to answer. But again, I just want this notated that you still, over 20 minutes into the debate, yeah. have not defined your terms no. and you've not answered any questions. Absolutely. Now I'll talk about Sharia. Right. Okay. In terms, of rea okay. In terms of reality, here's how Sharia works. No, no, I, no, I don't support, no, no, no. I don't support, I don't support, I don't support, I don't support for me actual, in Western, I don't support. Okay. That's I, not <laughs> how it really works because I don't think you live in an Islamic country under Sharia law, and neither do I. I don't do think I. you do either. Yeah, well, that's what I just said. Okay, and so let's talk about what they tell us about Sharia law. Let's say, let's see their words repeated via this data, shall we? Let's see what they actually think and see if you agree with it. Should we do that? Um, if you would answer my initial questions, we can definitely do that, and we'll I'll also make the conversation a bit larger. But yes. You, I still would love to give you another example, opportunity to answer any of my questions. Like, so, like you agreed to. So, any questions? Talk. Any questions that you can answer? Right. No. Okay. Let, We're right, twenty-one in, twenty-two in. No answers. All right. Go ahead. And I'm trying do to do the guess. Sam the Sam Harris Sharia thing. Go ahead. Right. So, do you agree with Sharia law? The answer was no. Right. Uh, well, I was giving you a full answer, but you cut me off. Okay, but you can just say yes or no. It's not a trick question. It's not a, it's not a question of a trick I, I question. I don't agree with Sharia law. I think Sharia law is abominable. Good for you. Okay, but do you, do you agree with Sharia law? Um, I, you, I can explain what Sharia law is to you. I could, I could also play your game where I could say I've already answered it and try to move on. Okay, but I, I'll I explain just, it to you if you don't interrupt me. This you ready? It's like Donald Trump. You ready? Then the KKK. I, look, I'm tremendous like Donald Trump. I agree. <laughs> I do a fantastic job. But look, let me, it's true. It's true. But look, here's, here's the reality. I do not support, personally, religious law of any kind. That is not my normative preference. Now, the second part of your question, and this is where, again, it's more complicated, unfortunately, than you wish to present it. If you go to a legal scholar like Rafia Sakaria, are you familiar with her? No. She's a good person to look up. You, it, it's a good, a good idea to, to, to do some Come of this on, stuff. No, no, I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. So she'll explain, as an example, when you do specific polling on Sharia, it means very different things to different people. So as an example, in Saudi Arabia, Sharia means, as implemented by the Saudi system, a vicious, Wahhabi, cruel, human rights abusing system, which I'm sure everybody would disagree with, and everybody would oppose a foreign policy that props that up. Now, in Egypt, what Sharia has meant in the past, and it's getting complicated now in the present iteration, is it became a stand-in for people who oppose the secular dictatorship of Hosni Mubarak. So in other words, the Muslim Brotherhood delivered health care services, and they advocated Islamic finance, which doesn't charge an interest rate, and people perceive that as more just. So when okay. you're talking okay. about, so when you're talking, and this is again, this is why it's so great to do the research and read, because when you're talking I'm, about I'm Sharia law, Thanks. you're never talking about just one thing. And this is a great thing for us. Hey, this okay, is a great thing great. for no, us, no, because what great. we can right. do is we can find the people that we support and want to align with in those societies and yes. build bridges that way, which is we far more effective than I, I just quoting right. Sam Harris. And, and you're absolutely right. Yes. Sharia law is not consistent. So yes. why don't we talk about certain aspects of Sharia law that we can know that people are being consistent about that's uh, a great idea right i i have no problem if you're willing to have the type yes, of I, I have no if, if you're willing to have an integrated conversation like i'm having and not just repeat poll stats and a couple of quran quotes and sam harris great we can talk about everything yeah, everything's on the table great. everything's okay, on the so table now let's let's talk sure about the, let's talk about the reaction to homosexuality under sharia law you're yeah? not really getting the point here. No, I think you're not really getting the point. The fact that you're not allowing this conversation to happen. I've just been the, having the conversation with you for 10 minutes and you still haven't answered any of our I've, questions I've that you've avoided. You finer points of Sharia law and you've denied, you've refused. I actually you've just walked you through them. The I, will, I will take a leaf from you. I have answered them specific, fully, except I actually have. Very specific topics regarding this, but you seem to refuse to want to do so. No, I'm actually getting more specific than you. That's what's actually happening in reality. But go I, ahead. We can talk about gay rights and Islam now. Go ahead. Okay. 
Right. Okay. So, but just again, I want to index 25 minutes in, you haven't answered any questions and you don't want to talk about policy, but go ahead. I know. No, look, you don't seem to understand. I I agree with you on policy. Do do you, do you comprehend that? That is not a point of debate. So then why are you running around doing all this nonsense about regressive left on Twitter? I don't understand why people call you the regressive left. And I am really, I'm still waiting for your explanation. I'm still waiting. I would love to learn. I've been waiting for so long. Tell me. Learning usually involves being quiet and listening. I will listen to your explanation. I'm all ears. Go ahead. Do you you understand? Right. Okay. So let's talk about the Middle East and North Africa. No answer to my question. You just did it again. (laughs) I have to admit, it's hard, as far as filibustering, you're doing a fantastic and tremendous job. It's true. It's true. Okay, go ahead. Do you understand that you said that and then said that I'm not answering because questions? Because you didn't do it. But go ahead. Go ahead. Just, <laughs> just indexing every time you don't do it. But go ahead. We'll go to gay rights. All right. Okay. So do you understand that in the Middle East and North Africa, being gay is very illegal in most places? Uh I, a, I don't, I, you don't say, sport. you don't say. Right. Now, is, is this something that you think U.S. foreign policy is responsible for? Um, it depends which aspect of it you're talking about. So as an example, there is undoubtedly in places like Saudi Arabia, an official homophobic policy who props Saudi Arabia. So Correct. it's a, all of the above question. Of so course, you, I you, think, I think if we had aligned as an example, in a place like Pakistan or Turkey, and I've spent time actually with gay rights activists in Turkey. I'm curious if you've ever spent time with gay rights activists or LGBT no, activists on the ground. No. So if we aligned with, as an example in Pakistan, someone like Asma Jahangir, who we have ignored to support both corrupt democratically elected governments as well as military dictatorships, yes, I think that we would have done a great deal more to facilitate the rise of moderate and progressive and genuinely religious Islam, as well as facilitate human rights activists working on gay rights issues. Of course, fanatical religions oppose gay rights. Everybody knows that. There's nothing breathtaking there. Okay, right. There's nothing exceptional there, of course. Okay, so so you you actually do think that U.S. foreign policy is responsible? No, I said it's an aspect. Uh -uh. No, I said all of the above. All of the above. And that's what we have control over. Okay, but how, how much do you think that influenced it? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to put on my... Okay, so now just, to, just so we're aware... Okay, this is why I agree with you. I okay. think that U.S. intervention in the Middle East in like the 60s and 70s did cause the rise of Islamic fundamentalism. Very right? good. Uh, no, exactly. We don't disagree on these facts. Okay. Right? However, at this point, do you think U.S. foreign policy is continuing the trend... In, say, Iran. Uh, well, actually, Iran just had amazing election results for moderates and reformers. So, actually, our diplomacy and engagement is facilitating a shift in political tiers there. So, actually, it is. Uh, with regards to the Middle East... No, 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 I'm going to finish. You asked a question. Let me finish it. Now we're in policy. Very good. With regards to the rest of the region, are you, are you serious? What do you think? Quite literally, this is not a PC justification. ISIS would not exist if you did not invade Iraq and dissolve the Ba'ath Party. We and would I, literally, who, when I we subcontract foreign policy to the Qataris and the Saudis, when we subcontract Qataris to the, to the Qataris and the Saudis, and they flood weapons to Al Jabhat al Nusra and ISIS, yes, we are supporting those groups. Absolutely. Yeah, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Okay, good. But do you think that Muslims have no agency of their own? No, I think that fundamentalist ideology exists in Islamic societies as it does in others, and it's a problem. There's no that's disagreement you, with that. that. Glenn that's Greenwald that's, agrees with you on that, my friends. Great, that's great. But you do, do, you, do you not think that Muslim agency plays any part in this at all? I believe I just said it did, and I don't know anybody Sorry, who to, disagrees so, with it. That's why I was reconfirming. Sorry. So you do There's agree nothing with, ground. You haven't gotten a got you. Everybody, if I'm you were not, listening to people like I'm me, not, genuinely, I'm, we listen, would say I'm yes. Not Look, we, okay, so you, you do agree that Muslims have agency, right? Indeed. Now, 93% of Muslims in the Middle East, most of them living under Sharia law, agree that homosexuality is something that should be illegal, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Is that not an idea we need to address? That is an idea and a policy we need to address. And I haven't, dis- right. so in this, and this actually, and this leads to the next part of my argument, which you haven't addressed. So what right. I said was that indeed, 
there is far too much power primarily which you seem to agree with which is great unlike someone like sam harris who sees it as a static non-geopolitical issue that there is far too much power given to Wahhabism, Wahhabism is an example. I talked to a Bangladeshi journalist last year, and it was really actually de quite depressing and terrifying. She was okay, a, a, a no, no. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. She was a Bangladeshi Muslim, and she was horrified of the role that Saudi Arabia played in Bangladesh. Um, so, to answer your question, the way we combat that homophobia and that idea is by again shifting policy to support activists and allies on the ground, which is contradicted by saying that Islam is one monolithic, monolithic thing okay. and is garbage. That's Islam the problem. Monolithic thing. You said it was the mother load of bad ideas. That sounds It is close. a mother load of bad ideas. All okay, of these so ideas are really, really widely held in Islam. And so how are you going to be an ally for someone who doesn't view Muslim, Islam that hey, way, who's on the ground hey. fighting to reform it? You're Why would they need to reform it if it wasn't like that? It's like everything. That's what religion no, no, is. No, it's 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 rampantly homophobic. We can agree on this. At right? this particular historical yes, moment. Yes, yes. We're not talking about tomorrow or yesterday. We we're are. Right no, now. no. We're I'm right talking about right everything now. because yeah. I look at things historically. No, no. But we, for this discussion, we're talking about right now. No, you, we're not. Yes, yes, no, we are. No, we're not. And we've just agreed. <laughs> even, even okay, yesterday, before, in ten years' time, it's probably still going to be rampantly homophobic. I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. We don't know. So let's just talk about what we know now. No. So at least we no, we're know talking now. About the context. Right now. See, this is what you guys and want to avoid. And for say twenty years, you know, however long, you know, it's rampantly homophobic. We can agree on that, right? This, this isn't. This isn't getting. This anywhere. isn't a gotcha. <laughs> this is not a gotcha. I've, I've already agreed this that homophobia like... homophobia is a big problem, just as it's a big problem in India, just as it's a big problem in many it other is, places. It is, but we're talking about the Middle East. So don't worry no, about actually, India. actually, actually, that's another problem here. I'm not, <laughs> I just, I talked about Bangladesh and Indonesia. I'm not <laughs> just talking about the we're Middle East. We're talking about the Middle East. No, we're not just talking about the Middle yes, East. If we're talking are. about I'm Islam, we're talking saying. about the whole <laughs> Islamic world. No, this is amazing how narrow you guys want the conversation to be, it's just like, so you can play these little word games. No, these aren't word games. You're the, not these, you're not this, talking about anything. Problem with the regressive left, you are unwilling to. That I want to talk about policy. Yes. No, you don't. Homophobia in the in the Islamic world is a problem and needs to be addressed by allying with progressive Muslims and shifting U.S. foreign policy. Great, done, bank it. Right. The okay. problem for you, and the problem for you, is that you contradict yourself. Because on okay. one hand, you say you want to be an ally of those people, while at the same time telling them that fundamentally their religion is shit and fundamentally a bad thing. I say, look, think, Islam, no. is, Islam is everything. Islam is Sufism. Islam is the, is the house of wisdom in Baghdad. Islam is Islamic feminists and human rights activists, as well as dangerous fundamentalists and monarchs. Let's assign with the good people and move the ball forward. Simple. I, I'm not hard. To I'm trying to. I... I I know you're trying to make us talk about Islam as a mon as a sort of overarching concept, but we're not doing that. We're talking Sharia law specifically, and particular instances in Sharia law that we have to have a problem with as liberals. Uh, no, I don't agree to all of your premises. I mean, you can keep talking, but you haven't. You know, it's interesting because substantively we appear to agree, and yes. then there's some type of just these odd evasions and word games that you're committed to having to make this a thing, which was the point of my video. <laughs> okay, so we can't now discuss how these human rights issues are dealt with. We actually just talked about it for 20 minutes while, again, clocking in at 34 okay, minutes, so you have still not answered the beginning questions of the conversation. But go ahead. <laughs> why would you not support Majid Nawaz? Majid Nawaz. Well, wait a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So now, just again, this is the pinball debate here. You haven't answered any of my questions, and now you want me to talk about someone specifically. I actually have. I've just, no, you haven't. <laughs> in the comments explaining to you exactly what's going on here i know but that I you can have followers in the comments saying anything that's fine it's right? fine i've explained so, how i think i don't have any strong opinion on majid nawaz i don't i don't have any curiosity and and i i have so, no interest in demonizing him i have no interest in praising him i, I right. he's fine i don't right. have any strong feeling about him same here but my my curiosity is that when majid says something like Homophobia is a rampant problem in the Muslim world, mm -hmm. mostly under countries living under Sharia law. In mm -hmm. fact, we can give you the exact numbers of who is actually homophobic. Mm -hmm. We need to start persuading these people that that's not the right thing to think. Why does he get called a porch monkey by regressives? 
Well, I never called him that, so I can't. I speak didn't say you did. that. Well, I just, I can't. I literally can't speak on. I'm not asking you to speak on behalf <laughs> of garbage things other people said in your realm. So I can't talk to that. I don't that, say that. That that's fine. Yeah. But you do understand that this did happen, don't you? His his attempt. I actually didn't know that, but that's okay. garbage. Okay. I don't. I don't condone that. Absolutely, I wouldn't expect you to. But this is the problem that people are having with the regressive left. People like Majid and Sam Harris are having. When they go to talk about actual issues and try to persuade people in the Middle East that these things actually need to be changed, and here are the reasons why, someone calls him a porch monkey. And it's always someone from the left. And that's really, really perturbing, wouldn't you say? Well, I would say the problem is, again, yes, Okay, so first I'll, I'll give you a direct answer. That's perturbing. I don't condone that. But the problem is, is again, I've said throughout the course of this debate, first of all, I asked you what to, def to define Glenn Greenwald, Ezra Klein, and myself. You still haven't. And I've been trying to say, which was the point of my video, which is that you guys don't want to do the serious work of policy and history okay. maybe you should so, and then, to and then no this you... is what happens and then you go and all of a sudden we're off in a, in a wild goose chase about someone calling majid nawaz something awful great i don't condone that you're, you're looking for reasons and you're looking for a definition of the regressive left right and i'm trying to ease you into it in a way that you will understand why people find it objectionable that when majid nawaz tries to criticize homophobia in the muslim world he gets called a porch monkey by people who probably watch your show uh no yeah okay well that's exactly. i didn't realize you were i had esp as well i would well, know more of what i was dealing with saga so in your in your video you did mention cultural relativism you said that, that sometimes there is too much cultural relativism going on sure uh, just as with when people justify halakhic law here in brooklyn and hasids who are tremendously homophobic and tremendously sexist just as people justify christian fanaticism and christian law that can be homophobic just as people justify uh, you know, burmese buddhist monks going yeah, and killing what, Ro what, rohingya what, in burma um, i what, i agree cultural relativism can be a problem sure this is another yeah, truism i, I agree with you I this agree. is another truism sure yeah yeah it is and we can also agree that a lot of it does come from the left. I mean, that's what you were saying in your video, right? I don't know, actually, because I just noticed that in Missouri that a Republican Congress people, uh, state legislators just tried to put a ban on protests at that in that state. That seems not an open society. I just noticed that some students, How conservative, that conservative students at Georgetown, complained that um, Antonin Scalia was not being treated respectfully and hurt their feelings. This and actually, as a matter of fact, I know of no Democratic politicians who have ever attempted to implement actual legislation to okay. ban right-wing protests. So, yeah, I agree. It's a problem on both sides. Sure. But no, no, that's not cultural relativism. We're not talking about partisan politics. Well, I, we're talking about not just we're, what we're you define. We're talking about the. I'm, I'm going to always go back to actual things and actual policy. Yeah, okay, so that's where I'm going to go, Sargon. I know, that's, no. that's the problem. We need to talk about ideas. No, the problem is we need to talk to about all of the above. We can sit around and have college freshman jerk-off fests all day, but we have an obligation at these platforms to talk about actual things with yeah. actual So you think you should talk about things without talking about ideas? No, I said all of the above, which I've been okay, doing. Okay, well, we've talked about You the haven't above, talked haven't. about the policy. Anyway. Sure, we have. I've agreed with you on everything. Okay, I totally so agree great. With your policy. So let's uh, co-sign okay. and work no, no, on no, real okay, things. Like, yeah, let's co-sign that and let's work on ideas now, because this is now the part we need to come to an agreement on, surely. Uh, if so we can, we, we can. Great. Absolutely. Totally agree. So now, we, you said there's a lot of cultural relativism coming from the left. Or, sorry, you didn't say a lot. You said there is some, and maybe some people go too far. Agreed. And I agree. Agreed. I think the problem is probably larger than you think it is. But, I mean, what do you think that stems from? Why do you think there are so many people on the left who are actually tolerant of people, I don't know, you know, stoning women to death for being raped? I mean, well, what, whoa, whoa, I, I personally whoa, find that really whoa. intolerable. All right. You, you just took an example that is so far out of the realm of certain okay, well, let's just go back to the anything I've seen. Example, then. Okay, go, go back to the homophobia example. We, we know we know that 93% of the people in the Middle East are homophobic, right? So why do you think there are so many people in the left who are tolerant of that idea? First of all, you know one stat from that is actually not current and things have been changing to some degree, but we'll How table much? that. How much have they changed? Not, radic not as much as they you need don't know, to. Do you? Not as much as they need to. No, exactly. So, but okay, here's, but here's, but don't, but don't, but don't, brilliant. let's not worship these stats. Okay. <laughs> not Go ahead. I just no, no. agree with your change. Okay. But, no, so fine. I agree with you. Think so much cultural so I think that there are the some, this. Uh, well, again, it's not my burden to explain why other people think what they think. Oh, I but I think, think that, look, I think that obviously where I'll give you an olive branch is I think that some people 
perceive from a positive place because they recognize things that you people don't seem to understand that of course there are that people with your political persuasion i hope my, i i hope you will uh, individualists i hope maybe that oh, won't bother okay. you okay no no uh, I, told people, you, yeah, I know you would be you would like that description i want to give you yeah, a fair so description no, no, so, so okay good so that that people recognize rightly that as an example, do you think America needs a white history month as importantly as a black history month? Do you think no. that that's the equivalent thing? No, of right. course not. Right, because you recognize that in the context of American history, obviously, black people have historically and contemporarily no, with things like police have, have, been, have been repressed and abused. And of course, we're yeah. always going to talk about history. But I, so, I, I so, so, yeah, so I'm, no, and I'm explaining, I'm explaining, I'm explaining, I'm explaining. Yeah, I'm but explaining. this is a good topic, actually. This yeah, no, and I'm explaining. Okay, so the... So the reason is that some people take a right and correct and intelligent impulse to be more aware of cultural power and how it plays out, and they take it too far to positions where they trist themselves in the pretzels and they don't make obvious distinctions. That's your answer. Right, okay. So you disagree with the amount of cultural relativism going on in the left, yeah? Uh, well, I disagree with the examples that you gave me. I don't see this as a rampant problem in the left. I see most people on the left okay. working to elect Bernie Sanders to help deal with income inequality. This is because I'm in the world. Okay, but of what politics. about all those people voting for Hillary Clinton? What people voting for Hillary Clinton? Well, I thought she was in the lead. Yes, but what's your point? She's the more conservative candidate. Yes. What's your right, point? So you think conservatives are voting for Hillary Clinton? In the Democratic Party, yes. If you go through lineups of how people ID politically, she draws uh, many conservative and center-right Democrats. Conservatives in the Democratic correct? Party are voting for Hillary Clinton. That's correct. That right? More center-right Democrats, yes. Ones right. who, as an example, support more military interventions, ones who support right. more likely to support free trade uh, agreements, actual policy things again. Okay. Can I, can I ask you a question about Black History Month then? I take it you're in support of the idea of a Black History Month. I, I live and breathe Black History Month. It was the most painful moment for me that it was over yesterday. Is, is that a joke? I, it, I'm actually in pain. So it is a joke. It's true. It's so you're true. not in favor of Black History Month. I, I, I well, think, I'm glad to hear I it. think Black History Month is, is a pretty obvious thing, and I'm actually curious now. I'm, I am joking <laughs> because it's not something I give much thought, but I think it's pretty <laughs> obvious something that uh, should be honored in American history. What would be your problem oh, with Black no, History no, Month? No, no, I totally agree that Black History should be honored in American okay, history. Okay, so what's your problem with Black I, History Month? Well, why would you need a separate month for that? Shouldn't every month be Black History Month and White History Month? Shouldn't both histories be taught as an accurate representation of what happened in your country's history instead of singling out a specific month for black people? Um, well, first of all, you're, I don't know what your point is. It's not like black history is not taught the rest of the months of the year. The whole okay, point well, why do you need is a black history month, then? because you have a group of people that have been historically radically repressed, had their contributions not acknowledged in American history books, and it just says, look... Let's okay, put a specific spotlight on something. That's not okay, that complicated. But... Yes, I disagree with you. I'm not a fanatical, pure individualist. Yes. Again, no, no, this I'm is not, not a gotcha. Not individualism. I'm talking about the need to have a separate month for black history if, as you say, black history is being taught as part of the mainstream curriculum to give an accurate representation of the country's history. It needs there to be no taught to all of the above. Black history month, right? All of the above. All of the above, again. All of the above. These are not either-or questions, again, Mr. Sarge. Right, okay, but I, I'm framing as if it is. But I'm not accepting your frame. <laughs> okay, but that doesn't mean that th this doesn't need an answer. That doesn't mean that it doesn't it's, need It's an not answer. a yes or no. I, I can play, I can play loops with you, too. I don't accept I, no, no, it as no, an no, either. I'm not, it's, I don't it's accept it as an either-or. Uh, it's not either-or. I'm looking for your answer. Why Why do we need a Black History Month? I already and explained that to not you. needing a Black History Month. I already explained is, that to you. Because Black History is being taught. Okay, so you think historical oppression. Uh, historical oppression and a historical lack of understanding about black contribution and achievement. Yes. Okay. Why not have an um, Native American History Month? We certainly should. Absolutely. Oh, right. Okay. So we haven't gone far enough. What about a Women's History Month? Throw it on the docket. Yeah. I know okay, that will really upset a lot of your followers. <laughs> why would it? Why would it upset any of my followers? I don't know if your followers are overly fond of the ladies. But I'm just, I, again, I don't know. All uh, heterosexuals. We actually have to wrap up pretty soon, Sargon. So let's, let's try to uh, come okay. to some okay, type I'll, of I'll point here. I'll just explain here. exactly the, the problem then. Okay. The, the problem is that you are making a distinction on people based on their race. Mm -hmm. 
Do you not understand that that is a bad thing? Uh, in terms of, again, historical and actual reality and the process of American of history, it is not a bad thing. But look, okay, we, need to, we need to actually do like a big picture summary here because we're yeah, about to be I'm done. I'm actually literally just doing that right now. Okay, right? go ahead. It's, it's literally Martin Luther King's words to say he doesn't want his countrymen, his black countrymen, judged on the color of their skin, but the content of the character. And you know that he also when, supported affirmative action, someone, right? Did you know that? When you judge someone Did on the color that? of their skin, you are negating their character. You're saying that right. no agency of that person can affect what you're going to judge them on. Okay. This, is why we, this is why we don't do it. Mm -hmm. This is a regressive policy. This is why you are part of the regressive left. You support the idea of discriminating for or against people based on their skin color or their gender or their religion. Mm -hmm. Okay? Th this is why you're the regressive left. Okay, so because I write, so it seems again that this is the point that I made in the beginning that you guys don't do history, you don't do politics, I do history very much, not really, and yes, I guess I and again what you just delivered is I mean it's better because of the accent, a list but of Rush Limbaugh, Rush, Rush Limbaugh could that? come out of Rush Limbaugh's mouth. R There's really, nothing you think, historically you think grounded not about this. People based on arbitrary characteristics is something. I, I mean, I, I not don't on a, it's not, not a, It's not nothing say. arbitrary about the. If you had been part of a historically repressed, you think group, people choose to be black? Uh, obviously not. Well, then it's something beyond their control, isn't it? So why are you why are you judging them on that characteristic? I'm why not judging them on that characteristic. That's another you story you made up. Been, black people have been horribly. This has nothing to do with black people are inherently nice or inherently this or inherently that. It's a historical reality that they have been oppressed. And this is how this is the problem with you guys. You're totally a historical. But look, you have the last word. We got to be out in thirty seconds. Sure. Um, you shouldn't judge people by characteristics that they have no control over. Okay, and also Martin Luther King Jr. Just so you know. He did call for affirmative action and massive wealth think, uh, redistribution uh, uh, to deal with historical realities. Yeah, I'm sure he did. So if we can get to a point where you guys can as equally aggressively tackle actual things that exist other than just these idea games, we'll be yeah. in a better place. But the, I, the, I appreciate the, the debate. Ideas. The problem we're having is ideas. We're, we have bad ideas in the West. There are bad ideas in the Middle East. That's the problem. I don't think bombs are going to solve the problem in the Middle East. I think better ideas will. And people like you and the regressive left are preventing better ideas from coming to the fore. No, Just so you know. You still haven't defined any of these terms, but I'll take your know, word I for know. it. You'll never. You'll never use, I, will, I will never get it, but it was fun. And uh, maybe we will do it again, Mr. Sargon. I would love to. All right. Good day. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. That See you tomorrow. I guess we'll post this for members later. Uh, we have the Ether soundtrack ready for this. Dude, what the fuck? This isn't beanbag. <laughs> Come on. I know that I'm going to get a lot of fucking tweets out of this. That I know. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Mr. Sargon. It was a learning experience. See you tomorrow.